When Bill O'Reilly asked Kirk Cameron to give his best shot improving the existence of God, this is what he said. The fact that a painting proves there must be a painter, the human body proves there must be a designer. The problem for Christians is that this kind of argument can be too easily flattened. In this video, I want to show Christians what scientists really believe about the origins of life so that Christians can come up with arguments that work and not end up looking completely ignorant of science. So let's start by putting the artist and painting myth to rest. Why can't paintings paint themselves? Simple, because they're made of chemicals that can't replicate themselves. Living matter, on the other hand, does contain a chemical that can replicate itself. Even if God made DNA, he doesn't need to intervene every time animals mate. The DNA does the job on its own. So the real question is, how did DNA appear? How did living matter come from non-living sludge? Here again, Christians need to drop a common argument based on complete ignorance of scientific theory, which is this. Of course, that's not what scientists believe. Life popping out of nowhere is no better a theory than life popping out of the hand of a deity. So what do scientists believe about the origin of life? Let's take this step by step. The first step involves looking at the primordial Earth 4.7 billion years ago. There it is, mostly wet, very warm, and with an atmosphere composed of all sorts of gases. Hydrogen, hydrogen cyanide, methane, and ammonia among them. DNA is a long-chain molecule made from just four different types of nucleotide. So the first question is, where did the nucleotides come from? No, there's no need to imagine God sprinkled them on the Earth. They can form quite happily on their own. In 1961, hydrogen, cyanide and ammonia were left to stew in an aqueous solution in a laboratory under conditions very similar to the primordial Earth. Left alone, the solution produced adenine, one of the four nucleotides that make up DNA. Once nucleotides formed, the next step was to join together to make chains called polynucleotides. In the 1980s, researchers found that a clay called Montmorillonite, which was abundant on the primordial sea floor and in hot pools of water on land, is the perfect catalyst for this process. Some of these long polynucleotide chains, like ribonucleic acid, or RNA, are able to make copies of themselves. The copies aren't always perfect. Mistakes creep in but some imperfectly copied molecules would have been better adapted to the environment than others. These successful molecules continue to replicate and pass on their traits, while weaker or less well-adapted molecules would have broken apart. Over hundreds of millions of years, RNA grew more complex. The single strand became a double strand, and the better adapted DNA molecule evolved. One of the differences between RNA and DNA is that DNA needs proteins to replicate itself, Proteins are made of amino acids, which are often called the building blocks of life. So where did the first ones come from? No, there was no need for God. The same experiment that produced nucleotides from a primordial broth of ammonia and hydrogen cyanide also produced a lot of amino acids and long chains of amino acids called polypeptides. Montmorillonite, it turns out, is a natural breeding ground for all kinds of complex organic chemicals. As DNA molecules replicated themselves, they shared their environment with other chemicals that thrive in Montmorillonite clay. One group, called lipids, have a natural tendency to clump together to form spherical structures called micelles. RNA or DNA molecules that attracted these lipids would therefore find themselves protected inside a micelle membrane. Because they were better protected, they better survived and replicated more successfully. There you have the first primitive cells. They look nothing like the complex cells we have today for a very good reason. Over 3.7 billion years, they've evolved. I'll tackle the subject of evolution in another video. What you've seen in this video is a chemical process that took us from non-living chemicals to primitive cells in around 1 billion years. It has to be said that this research is in its infancy, and current hypotheses are nowhere near as solid as the theory of evolution, which has been around for 150 years and has overwhelming evidence to support it. But the reality is a far cry from the idea that scientists believe life popped out of nowhere. Now that you know what the hypothesis is, what can Christians do to blow it out of the water? Well, you have to go back through the process and point out which of the steps is impossible. Is it impossible for nucleotides to have formed in Montmorillonite clay? 
Is it impossible for them to have joined together to make polynucleotides? Is it impossible for polynucleotides to become ribonucleic acid, RNA? Is it impossible for ribonucleic acid to evolve into deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA? Or is it impossible for DNA to accrete a protective membrane of lipids? If God did indeed create life, then where did he come in? Step one, step two, and why? If the chemical process can happen on its own, why would God need to intervene at all? Before I go, I just want to look at a couple of other hoary old arguments that have been used and which also show a complete ignorance of science. Remember, Christians, I'm trying to save you the embarrassment of appearing ignorant, so unless you're talking to a third grader who still believes in Santa Claus, be warned that the following arguments can be very easily countered. Really? Just because creationist websites like to pass this myth around doesn't make it true. We know it's not true. Left alone, organic chemicals can and do polymerize to form longer, more complex chemicals. Oh, that sad old argument. The simple answer is, no, it doesn't. Most people who make that claim have never actually read the second law of thermodynamics. The law doesn't apply in this case on two counts, which are clearly spelled out in the law itself. I suppose you could say the same of any field of science, from the explosion of stars to the existence of dinosaurs to the eruption of an ancient volcano. The fact is we don't need to see events to understand what happened as long as the evidence is there. I can't prove that a bolt of lightning is the result of an electrical discharge, even if I am looking at it. What I can say is that the origin of life has a natural explanation. In all cases of science, we go with the natural explanation, because if there is a natural explanation that fits all the evidence, it makes more sense than a supernatural one with no evidence that relies on the intervention of unseen and undetectable beings. Our knowledge of the world around us isn't a guessing game, it's a detective trail. And this detective trail shows very clearly that deities just aren't necessary to explain how life began on Earth.